following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the January 17th. Fabulous Friday edition of today's Traders Ed Show. I'm your Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Of course, happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. Hope it's a great weekend for you. So, uh, hey, I know how to make sure that every day is a good day, and that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go look at the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the buyers and the sellers, the bulls and the bears, what they're communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Now is not too early. 877-927-6648. Of course, internationally, 727-445-1044. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fantastic and fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show. Right now, we have the Dow trading down 87 points at 17645. S&P's off 11. She's trading at 2067. NASDAQ composite off 47 points at 4797. Russell 2000 off six points right now. She's trading at 1141. The DAX closed up 81 points. The FTSE closed up 71. Gold's back $5, trading at 1293. Silver's off 22 cents. She's trading at 1738. Light Sweet Crude, on the other hand, is up a buck 33. That's trading out at 4754. Leading the charge dollar wise to the upside. You've got uh, Elizabeth Arden. Maybe that's a buyout or something. R D E N up uh, forty eight percent out news here. Uh, yeah, it must be something. Uh, Re Revron, okay. Revlon, Revlon. How about that? Revlon to buy Elizabeth Arden. Okay, um, let's see. How, what else? Dollar wise, uh, Simarex, Simarex, Simarex Energy up four twenty two. That's about nearly four uh, percent. Banco Marco Macro could be Marco Polo. That's trading up 360. Chipotle's up four bucks. Uh, Canadian Pacific Railway, that's up about uh, three dollars. To the downside, you've got Google off eighteen dollars. Amazon's down thirteen. Regenerant Pharmaceuticals off eight. Synaptics down six. AutoZone down uh, seven bucks out there. So. Let's go try to – now, today, since it is the uh, end of the uh, week, we can go look at weekly charts, daily charts, intraday charts. We'll try to do the whole nine yards and anything else that you'd like. Of course, uh, you can give us a call. You can go ahead and post uh, a note inside the uh, Tigers. Then you can send me an email, steve at tfn.com. I'll try to get to every question that is asked. So where should we begin? Well, let's begin with what is the most important element for us to be paying attention to today. I think that's the easiest thing for us to look at to give us a sense as to what the uh, market is likely to then do over the course of the next three, four, five days out here. And I believe that the most important thing for us to look at it's going to be the daily NQ contract out here. Now, yesterday's move down was a beautiful test of uh, support. Now, that support just really being a trend line, that trend line coming off of the lows here from February 11th. Hopefully, you're watching us on Tiger TV. If you are, looking at my chart out here. And from the low on February 11th to the uh, next touch point to create that trend, which was the May 19th low, we can see that yesterday moved right down into it, rejected it, and created your favorite candle and mine the hammer candle now what's a hammer candle hammer candle in essence means that the market is trying to hammer out a low when they occur when they occur how about when they occur at a uh, at a pattern completion area and i will say that a trend line is a potential pattern completion area it's very important so the most the most important thing to be watching today just one thing just like Curly on uh, whatever the name of that movie was out there. Just one thing. That's all I'm giving you 
to help give you a guide. And it says, well, I'll we'll give you more things to look at. But really, this one thing is the most important. This is the muy importante level, and that's going to be the low of yesterday. Now, it can be tested. I don't, it doesn't matter to me if intraday we see the NQ move below 43.52.50. It's just simply that you don't want to see a close below that. A close below that in a hammer candle means just one thing. If you're long, you're wrong. Of course, this would be the fight of the hammer candles if the NQ were to close below it, but uh, and the ES and the Russell 2000 don't. You see, yesterday was a day of hammers out there, hammering out a bottom. If we take, now, one last thing here, not one last thing necessarily, but another thing to be paying attention to is, uh, you know, if it closes below the trend line today, which in essence is yesterday is about the 4,400 level, you're at 4,366. You know, we kind of have a couple of, I'll go with the hammer candle right now, being the uh, being, being the level that would give us the most uh, important information out here. Just because the hammer candle doesn't get broken doesn't mean that the NQ is out of the woods. The NQ has got to close above 44, 49, 15. Now that number is going to change uh, Sunday evening. It's going to change throughout the day today, but we'll use 4450 would be the number. It would begin to get out of the woods if it could close above that level. You, if we take a look at the S&P futures contract, it too, but its hammer candle is not in play. At least it's not in play just yet. So here now, however, it broke its trend line. But what we, what the ES Mini is telling us is look at all of the support down at the lows. Let me get my uh, cursor out here. Look, there was a hammer candle that formed out here on May 19th. All right. And so you can see that yesterday was a test of that hammer candle. How important are these hammer candles with regard to support? They're, they're very important out here. So we can see that the bulls are really hanging out between the lows of May 19th, the lows of yesterday out here. Those things get taken apart. That spells uh, trouble. That spells double trouble because really inside of the, uh, you know, you could almost say it uh, would be a break of a consolidation pattern uh, inside of the uh, ES out here. But you can see we're well off of the lows from yesterday. Inside the ES, that's the uh, 20, 40, 75 level out here. So to a certain extent, all looks okay. It's going to be the NQ. If we look at the uh, Dow futures to see what uh, they're doing out here. Now, well, let's look at the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000, stronger. So if we get a turn, this is a little clue out here. If we get a turn in the market to the upside, if in fact the market has formed a bottom, I cannot conclude that it hasn't. Come next week, I will take, if somebody said to me, Steve, what is the best trade right now? I would say the absolute best trade right now is to sit on your hands. Sit on your hands and wait for a signal next week. It might come Wednesday, it might come Thursday, it might come Friday, but then you're going to be long and strong into uh, the July 4th holiday, beyond July 4th out there. That's really what you're looking for. So the best thing is to sit on your hands. Unless we get another summer type of something, yeah, we could have got it today, some other type of signal that says, okay, the party has begun a week early. But right now, I don't know. But the Russell 2000, you can see in its move down to test its trend line, actually never got down there yesterday. So the Russell 2000, and maybe if you just logically think about it, the mere fact that interest rates are never, ever, ever again going to go up uh, bodes well for the uh, small caps out there, right? All of those loans that are tied to uh, rolling interest rates out here, they're in good shape. I hear that music. Yesterday, I went through that break. Uh, luckily, we've got a great guy in the control. He's going to make sure that I do not do that again today. We come back from this break. Let's continue to look at the Russell 2000. Anything else that you'd like, Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, uh, folks. You know, instead of going back to the Russell 2000, let's, uh, let's go take a look at what's going on right here, right now, inside the uh, market. We'll take a look at the ES Mini. Uh, we're looking at a 10-minute uh, chart out here. It wouldn't matter if it was a 10-minute or 30-minute. But what we can see here is right now, the ES Mini is trying to take out a level of resistance. So this will give us a pretty decent feel as to how the uh, rest of the day goes. That is, in fact, if over the course of the next two minutes, this resistance level gets taken out. Now, we take a look at what the ES Mini did so far this morning. After it made that nice little high last night at about, what was it, 10.30 uh, or so, 10.40, 10, yeah, about 10.40 out here, to, uh, 8.40, 8.40, what am I talking about? So we had the ES Mini get up to a price point to 20.74 and started to back off for a while. And you can see that the retracement that it did from low to high, yesterday's low to the high out here was a 0.618 retracement, 20.53, a number of things just simply out at the 2053 area. One of those things, one of those most important things out here is the blue horse online going across my screen out here, a brand new TAS market profile on a daily basis that formed, and price in essence came right down and tested. Look, it got just slightly below, it got what, down to 20, uh, 2053 in a quarter versus 2054.75. So nice levels of support out here. That need to hold, right? We're also taking a look at yesterday's hammer candle. We're way away from that. But if you take a look at this descending trend line, again, it's just a 10-minute chart. But you can see on a 10-minute chart out here, you've got a little bit of resistance, a brand new 10, uh, not a brand new, but a box that formed here at about 1130 this morning. Um, which is uh, 2060 is the number. And you can see a nice little trend line that price is trying to uh, get above. Uh, we just finished that 10-minute bar. It finished right on it. So we're going to have to wait for this uh, next 10-minute uh, bar out here. But if you get above 2061, then what that says is that you ought to see the ES Mini get up to 2069.75. That's the number then to be watching. That should be That's going to be your next resistance zone. If price takes that out or takes out the highs from 840 last night, you know, then it's off to the uh, races. We don't have, we can't make that conclusion. I wouldn't make that conclusion here just yet, but it's off to a decent start to do that. Again, that's intraday. So we know yesterday, big day for the uh, buyers, big day for the bulls because they formed that nice hammer candle. In some cases at uh, trend lines, in some cases other tests like in the ES of a hammer candle. Previously, that was in essence testing a swing point low out there. So uh, we want to be paying attention to yesterday's lows inside of the equity futures contracts. Uh, for sure out here. Okay, so what do we want to switch to next? You know, let's do this. 
Let's do this. Since it is the end of the week out here, let's go take a look at some weekly charts. Let's take a look. Uh, let's see. So here's my weekly chart. What do we have up here first? Uh, okay, so I have the continuous contract, the continuous contract for Lightsweed Crude. Now, we can see that last week, now this is important for us to be paying attention to. We were talking about hammer candles earlier, so uh, that's all apropos. I don't know how that works. Um, but if we take a look at last week's candle, it's a shooting star. Now, a shooting star is the uh, cousin, brother, brother-in-law. It's related to the hammer with the exception of it occurs up at the highs. Just as important as a hammer low is, right, if you're long or wrong, just as important uh, is that is the shooting star. If that high fails, that says price is going to go higher. So that's a significant level of resistance was last week's high in Lightsweed Crude. Um, what kind of candles formed last week inside the indices out here? That'll be curious. Let's go take a look at it. Let's start with the S&P 500, right? That's probably the best place to start. So what did we have last week? I actually don't know. What did form out here? Uh, bearish engulfing. Looked like a shooting star, but it, it certainly wasn't. Close, but no cigar out here. However, in the case of the S&P 500, moving down this week here and testing a level of support. That's that little red line. That's Stevie's red line. That's a uh, type of, that's a, that's a red line that you and I follow. That's 2065.91. So being able to test and reject that, that is, uh, we'll call it intermediate term bullish. Um, you know, getting above last week's highs out there would certainly say you're going to go test the all-time high out here. That was the S&P 500. What do we have? Probably the same type of thing. Uh, so no, no shooting star out there inside of the S&P. Let's try the Dow Jones Industrials. Let's see what uh, probably the same candle formation. Ah, shooting star. There we go. So, hey, how about this? You had a nice little hammer candle down here on January 22nd. That was the week uh, that ended January 22nd. That was with price moving lower, doing less relative energy. That was testing the uh, hammer candle from August 28th out there. Hey, you see, this is why we pay attention to these things. The market is always, Tom likes to say, walking, squawking, and talking. Well, this is the talking part of what the uh, of what Japanese candlestick charting does for you and I, right? So we've got that nice level of resistance. You can see, you know, this, this level of resistance of the shooting star out here, you know, line it up with this bear sash out here from the week of November 13th. So we know that this is significant resistance for the Dow. You get above that, that high, by the way, when I say that, I'm referring to 18,016, says that you would move higher. Right now, the red line, price is trading right on support out here. So this week has been nothing more at this stage of the game other than a test of support. That's inside the Dow. How about that Russell 2000? You know, probably feels like I've neglected it. Let's just go back and take a look at it. Let's see what it did last week out here. Uh, it's also had a, a shooting star, both a combination of a shooting star and a doji out here. You can see those hammer candles on a weekly basis that it formed when it was making the lows in the week of January 22nd and uh, December, uh, February 12th as well. Um, those were in, that's an important uh, bottom out here. You can see Russell 2000 way above the red line out here. So uh, that says if you get above the high from last week inside the Russell, that's 1190.20 out here. Um, you know, you're off to at least get into the 1208 area. I would venture to say you would be headed much higher than that. So that's in the Russell 2000 on a weekly basis. Hey, let's take a look at some of the gold. Let's go, you know, let's take a look at the XAU. That uh, stands out right there. Let's go see what the XAU actually did last week. And the, oh, how about, forget about last week. Let's take a look at what it's doing this week. So if you take a look at the XAU, made a nice bottom, right? It has your favorite pattern out here. That's where price moves lower, does with less relative energy out here. Now, that pattern alone, if you were to just simply go ahead and read J. Wells Wilder's book and you were to go ahead and try to trade this pattern, you'd get crushed. E e great pattern, by the way, Wells. But you'd get crushed if you just simply went ahead and traded the pattern the way that he was teaching people or has taught people to do that out there. I would not teach you to trade it that way. Instead, you would want to trade it Stevie's way. And Stevie's way says you've got to wait for the cavalry to, cavalry to arrive out there. How do you do that? Well, that's what the market is always doing. It's always communicating to you and I. And during that week of January 22nd, price is moving lower. And voila, what did it form at the end of the week? A hammer candle. Very nicely out here. Now. This is something to be paying attention to. This is a weekly chart. So we're talking about intermediate time frames out here. And folks, right back here as price was moving lower, you see eh, the cavalry never uh, arrived out here. Didn't arrive until right here. In fact, it arrived two weeks in a row because the following week it took that three candle formation, that three river morning star. So that was a beautiful thing out here. Now what we've got 
uh, is we've got a uh, price relative strength divergence pattern at the highs from yesterday for this week out here. And as long as the XAU closes just one penny below the open, the open was 91.48, so 91.47 out there. You have a key reversal. Now, it's not going to show up in Japanese candlestick charting out here. Key reversal says what? Got to have three things. The high and the low need to be exceeded from the prior week. Voila, you've got that. You've got to be in an extended condition. Hey, that's what this whole pattern is all about. And you have to close one tick, one penny, one pip in the opposite direction of that trend. You've got that right now. Be careful. It worked at the bottom. Why wouldn't it work at the top? See you, Roads, with TF and Ed. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's off 66. S&P is down 8. NASDAQ composites off uh, 38 points out here. Um, let's check in on some currency pairs. Uh, they have quieted down from uh, yesterday. Let's go look at the uh, euro, see what it is doing. Still continues to trade with inside that nice little rising price channel that is out here. So uh, keeps getting tested, uh, keeps getting rejected. You had uh, quite a swing yesterday. Price was able to get down, test that uh, TAS point of control on a weekly basis, reject that level and then close right above that rising uh, price channel out here. Now it's really stuck in a resistance zone, which is the bottom of that daily box out there. So really stuck in a narrow trading range, one 
1294. That is your level of resistance. You close above that, you're looking at 113 to 114 ish area, maybe even a move higher, maybe even to the 11464 level. On a move lower, you'd be looking to move down to about the 108. But as, as we speak right now, the euro continues to hold support of its rising price channel. If we take a look at the Great British Pound out here, uh, that did have a nice little trend line. It's trying to get back to that trend line. Let me turn off that little bottom area, which is uh, allocated for volume, but we don't have that. So you can see now you can see that nice little trend area price broke through that trend. It's just trend line out here. Broke through with a wide ranging bar that was back on June 10th. It's going to try to at least get up and test that level. What is that level you say? You might as well go ahead and write down on your pad of paper 144. 1.44 four is the level where price ought to get up and test. Now, why do we say that? Well, one, you can see the price is above the TAS daily profile. We know that when you break a trend, you like to try to get back in it. So that says you'd probably go test that level. And just slightly above that happens to be the uh, weekly top of the box at 144. So it looks to me at this stage of the game, that is where the Great British Pound is headed to. If we take a look at the Japanese yen, she's traded out at 104.23 out here. Do we have any patterns here worth really noting? Looks like we had an expansion of swing points out here. Uh, let's go try to measure that. So uh, the expansion I'm referring to is from the trading session of May 3rd from that low to the high out here. Yep, you have a 1.272 expansion. Um, does that mean that that's where price is going to hold at the uh, 103.94 level? Nah, it's a daily chart. Those candles don't show any sign of reversal. But a small body candle today says Sunday slash Monday. You could go ahead and uh, take that out. I don't see any other you know, what's the other pattern? An A to B equals CD pattern, I suppose, would be down there. Let's take a look at that. That would look like this. Um, well, uh, you'd, you'd, really, you'd really have to start up here if you're going to give it a valid A to B equals CD. So I don't think that that pattern has unfolded. So if, in fact, the uh, low from yesterday gets taken out, uh, oh, how about that? I take that back. That did come. Well, all right. Here's what this, here's what this pattern is. Uh, says to us. Let's get rid of the uh, boxes for the moment. Let's turn those off. There we go. Okay, clean it up just a yet tad. So what you've got going on right now, let's move this up here. Um, the way that price has come down on this uh, CDD, like yes, yesterday completed a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD. Do we have a bullish reversal signal? Absolutely not. Positively not. And even if we get one Sunday slash Monday out here, I'd be very careful because this move down here has been pretty strong. Says to me that more likely than not, you're, you're going to see the Japanese yen head to the 101.90 level, which would then say the Nikkei will then come back and probably bust out the uh, lows, uh, its most recent swing point low that it was going against. Never got down there and tested. I don't think it got down there and tested it last night. But let me see here. I think right at the open, it had gapped up. It took the handoff that uh, uh, that Joe Namath in our markets gave to it, and it uh, it took off running. But let's take a look here. It was up, Nikkei was up 165 points. That's a weekly chart. Let's put this on a, a daily time frame out here. And, uh, yeah, so this thing had just gapped up. Now that candle here, that's just really a pause button. That's all that that is. Inside day, you can take a look at that as well. And uh, those typically suggest that the uh, trend is going to uh, continue out here. And that would say that uh, the Nikkei is probably headed to the February 12th level. That's my read. That's my take. That's the market's read and the market's take as we speak right now. So we've looked at the currency pairs. We didn't look at the U.S. dollar, but of course, uh, you know, we can go take a look at that. What's the pattern out here inside the U.S. dollar index? Let's just put on our profiles out here. And uh, you're trading below the top of the daily box at uh, 90, what is that, 94.39. So no reason for the U.S. dollar index to, uh, for the euro to head higher, U.S. dollar index to pull back to about the 93.68, 93.89 level. That seems like that's what's in store for it. Um, you know, so what's that going to do to gold? Hey, I, I can see gold bouncing a bit, uh, most certainly. Um, gold, 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 gold. Let me see here. What's my 30-minute chart here look like? 30-minute chart uh, gave a nice high yesterday, nice uh, reversal signal as it was moving higher. 
And that's why, like, the 30 minute chart, you know, you and I, we look at enough of these, right, over and over and over again. And then, you know, you start to be a believer out there, right, in uh, Stevie's patterns, right? Price is moving higher yesterday. Uh, does it with what? This 30 minute chart does with less relative energy. The uh, bears show up. The cavalry shows up right there at 1130. Nice old bearish and golfy. Nice three river evening star out here. Price moves lower. Does it with less energy. Starts to stall out right here at about 430 yesterday afternoon. Just just really moves sideways out here and uh, at this stage of the game you ought to make its way back up to these highs out here uh, it says I got to select an object. Uh, come on, work with me. We're on live TV. I, I can see it moving back up and testing the uh, 1300 uh, level out here. Uh, what does that mean? Well, I'll tell you what it means. To really, yeah, that's a 30 minute chart. That's an intraday chart. In order for gold to really give you and I its message that it's uh, ready to uh, take a, a dive, you know, the kind where you're going to hold your nose and pray out here and hold your breath, uh, you need to see it get below 1275.40. I don't recall what the number was yesterday. Today's number, 1275.40. Sunday's number is going to uh, be, you know, somewhere in that range out there. But if we start to see price closing below that inside of uh, Goldilocks, then that spells uh, at least a retracement, probably a healthy retracement out there. We'll take this one day at a time. You know, it's 1.37 in the afternoon, so we've been trading for, what, four hours out here? Let's see if I can put my little trading calculator up on the uh, screen out here so we can do volume. So uh, Qs have done 18 million, IWM 19, 73, 1.6. So you're looking at the Qs doing about 33 million shares today. Let's go take a look at uh, today versus yesterday inside of the uh, Qs. Let's actually go ahead and turn our volume shtick uh, back on. Let's do that out here. So inside the uh, queues, um, you can see here's the trend line. It's trying to get back above. It's struggling. You know, Apple is uh, not helping matters. But today's volume so far, 18 million, suggests we do about 33 uh, million shares out here. Yesterday, you know, you'd say it was moving lower with about the same type of volume, 32 million shares yesterday, going into about uh, 30 million out here. So no real conclusion that uh, that at least that I can draw here. The conclusion that we could draw is it's broken its trend line. That would say that unless it gets back up inside there, the Qs could easily take a tumble down to the 104.47 level. That would be a test in essence of its uh, swing points from back out here in uh, the uh, May, May 6th and uh, May 19th, as well as the uh, weekly center of its box out there. Could easily make that as being the case going into uh, the middle uh, late next week out here for the uh, Qs. If we take a look at the Russell, the IWM out here, still looks stronger than all the others. Hasn't pulled back to test its trend line way away from that May 19th swing point out here. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed 
Lift has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, before we went to the break, I think we might have been looking at the IWM, and if we weren't, we will. This isn't the last uh, segment that we've got, but uh, worth looking, worth noting. I've spent a little bit of time with you here. Uh, as I mentioned, the NQ, the low from yesterday, is something we want to be paying close attention to. You don't want to see it close below that today. If you do, that would uh, signal to me, you go test the hammer candles from the ES Mini and the Dow. Well, the Dow had a bullish in golfing, and perhaps even the Russell 2000. Uh, sometime into uh, next week. Um, but if we don't bust out those lows, then it's, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of coin toss. We're maybe trade sideways um, for a few days out here. But the IWM is where it is, I think, that you want to have your focus because it has been the strongest indice thus far. As we take a look at its retracement, the retracement just from its most recent swing point, if we just simply go from a low, that's the low from the swing point of May 19th to the high, whoops, that was an expansion. Let's actually look at a retracement. That might make it a little bit easier. So from low to high, it's made just a slightly slightly more than a 0 0.382 retracement, probably about a 50% retracement out there. Uh, no big deal. Um, it has not broken its trend line out here. And what we'll also want to do, you'll want to pay attention on uh, Sunday evening how this trades. If there's any pressure in the market, just flip over to a 30-minute chart because when something is strong, such as Russell 2000 out here. What you want to pay attention to is some of the best buying patterns that could set up. And inside the Russell, that would actually be the low that uh, took place. To, well, I, at this stage of the game, it looks like it's going to be the low that formed at 130. Uh, because unless we see some huge push to the downside, I think there's a 10 minute delay on this chart out here, but unless we see some huge push down in the next uh, 16 minutes, what we have is we have a nice little seventh wave count to the downside. Now, in a real strong trending market, which in the case of the Russell 2000, Anybody who argues that it's not in a strong trend, they're looking at a different chart than you and I are. That's all. So I say it's in a nice, strong uptrend out here. Hasn't even been close to being broken. You got a nice seventh wave move, no price relative strength divergence pattern. And if that low holds uh, and we see the markets move higher, that actually was a, a pretty good signal of a, a bottom in the market. Likewise, if it uh, fails, then that says you probably want to be watching 11 o'clock in the morning on June the 16th because that's where you've got your hammer candle. I would say that's where price will go test. And if that gets broken, then you could have an A to B equals CD to the downside. So we know the daily NQ is something we're going to watch. Uh, just just uh, giving you some nice little morsels of information for you to pay attention to that way you can uh, gauge what your next uh, what your next uh, piece of action ought to be out here but right now things look pretty good now from a daily perspective say you don't have all these tools what are you looking for in order for the Russell to get back the IW I should say to get back to kind of being uh, another message that the move to the downside would be done you'd really want to see this thing close above 
number is 114.84, and you're trading at 114.13 right now. So pay attention to that uh, for the uh, day as well, 114.84. Now, what does that mean? That means if it closes above that level, you'd likely to see a move to 116.95, and that is inside the IWM. Volume-wise, uh, quad witching, so, you know, I don't know how you gauge this. The spies have got the same type of volume as yesterday. Uh, the spies uh, today and yesterday came back and tested a level of support, potential support. It's TAS weekly point of control level as long as 20570 holds. Uh, the price is going to try to get back up to 209.23. Above 209.23, you're back off to test the highs out there. So you can write those numbers down on your pad of paper as to what the uh, spies are going to do. Might as well finish this off for you. And we'll just look, take a look at the Dow Diamonds. The Diamonds here, uh, they are trading back right now with about 1.7 million shares. That seems kind of light to me. Um, of course, it's an inside day here. Uh, what we do know, spies, uh, di diamonds ought to do about 3 million shares. So that's nothing. Yesterday, they moved down with 5.5 million shares. You got an inside day, so hard to really, you know, that says the previous trend could continue out here. Another test of that uh, weekly point of control. What the diamonds ought to do on their next push higher is try to uh, get up to 178.80 and try to clear that. On their next push lower, they ought to try to get down, test, and hold 173.55. So those are the numbers on the uh, diamonds, the spies, the Qs, the IWM, the whole kit and caboodle out there. Oh, I don't want to do that. Cancel that. Almost deleted something that I did not want to delete. Uh, I had an email that says, uh, you know, what other intraday short-term chart patterns do you see? I'm long this market. What do you see for the rest of the day? Um, boy, what do I see more than what I've already uh, provided you intraday chart. So let's go. We took a look at the 10 minute chart, right, for the ES. So let's go back and take a look at that. And right now we see that that trend line has broken. Uh, but price has, uh, you know, is in and, and price is trading above its uh, 10 minute TAS market profile. So, so far, so good. Let's turn off the let's turn off the uh, that retracement level. So, what does that set up for us? Um, 2069, I think, was the number that I gave you. So watch on the uh, continue. As long as uh, ES is able to hold 2060, uh, then what you could anticipate is move to 2069. Um, and uh, volume-wise, if we just use a volume A to B equals CD type program here, the swing point that it's dealing with is uh, from 1210. It began at 1210, and the volume there was 22,000 contracts. So the other thing you'd like to see is you'd like to see that level get taken out, that level, by the way, being 2062.50, being taken out with more than 22,000 contracts. Well, the last push up here was with 19,000, so just slightly less. You really want to see that taken out. If that gets taken out with volume, then your probability is that you'd see price get up to 2065 to 2067 to 2070 are the numbers out here. I would say it's more like that 2070 number to be paying attention to. What do we have inside of the NQ out here on a 10-minute basis just to uh, see if we can get some feedback from it? Uh, of course, the NQ was struggling. I think it might have been the uh, the Apple China rumor out there that started that uh, cascade. Uh, what do we know about it? Well, the NQS was pushing lower. Here, okay, so here's a 10-minute basis. So the swing point that it was trading down into occurred between 10.50 and 11 o'clock yesterday morning. And as it was moving lower, there were about 7,300 contracts. Well, as that area was being tested, it was 6,000 contracts, 4,800. So you can see that what the NQ was doing, even though it was pushing lower, making a 100% move, move, moving into a swing point, light volume. Rejection of that on light volume. Don't let anybody tell you any different because you're looking at it right here. So now what we've got is we've got the NQ above its swing point. Now the swing point that we're dealing with is 1210 in the afternoon between 1210 and 1220. That had volume of 3600 contracts out here and that was passed with 32740. Right now you've got 2798 and a minute to go. So uh, you got uh, you got you got you got you don't have the volume out here. Nonetheless, still looks like there's an A to B equal. Here's the, ooh, now that's a that's interesting. Let me uh, hit my update key, make sure. It looks like a new market profile has formed out here. So that's going to give us some information. No, it didn't. It didn't. Okay, updated it. Um, so what could the uh, Qs bounce to out here? Even though it's taken out a swing point without volume right here, your A to B equals CD pattern on this gives you a, a projected move 
to the price level of uh, so the one to one is about to hit that here shortly post haste 4376 and 4381 and then 4387 would be the uh, numbers to be paying attention to inside the NQ. If the NQ moves higher, volume or not, uh, ES is going to hit that 2069 level. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Today, many commodities are trading at relative lows. And now you can take advantage with EverBank's new limited-time, five-year, market-safe currency comeback CD. This indexed and U.S. dollar-denominated CD offers 100% principal protection and is based on the equally rated performance of currencies of Australia, Canada, Chile, Mexico, and South Africa. These five countries are especially rich in commodities, and the respective currencies are poised to do well should commodity prices begin to recover. Keep in mind that no APY, a periodic rate of interest, is paid on the CD. Don't miss out on this innovative new financial opportunity. CDs must be opened and funded by the upcoming July 14th deadline. To apply online and learn more about the CD, including product terms and disclosures, visit everbank.com forward slash TFNN now. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Back, uh, folks, a, a question that has come in during the break from Robert in NYC, New York City. you got to love it. He said, uh, where do your charts show the 30-year Treasury yield headed to? Um, so let's take a look at the 30-year Treasury yield. Uh, that's up on my screen right now. Let me turn off that volume area just so we have more, more of a palette to uh, be looking at out here. So if you're watching us, on, oops, that was the wrong tool. you got to actually... Turn off the correct tool out here. Okay. So there's a couple of interesting patterns here to be paying attention to. And the first one is this nice island bottom that had formed out here. Let's go ahead and draw a uh, an arrow to it. Let's make that a blue arrow. So here is your island reversal, right? Let's also draw a uh, the bottom of that island. And what we can see here is that yesterday um, that island was taken out. Now, nothing more bearish 
than a failed bullish pattern. Price has gotten back above it today. Um, so, you know, it's, um, as long as you can, as long as the 30 year Treasury yield stays above 240, then maybe a OK. But it did break that island bottom out here. Uh, what else do we have? That's what the daily says. Let's put this on a weekly chart. Let's see what a weekly we were looking at weekly charts earlier. Oh, oh, the, the same place where I have that's interesting. So the same place where I have that island bottom pattern out there, right? Let's go from the weekly to the daily. So that's interesting. Okay, there's there's your there's your there's your island bottom on a really interesting. So there's your island bottom on the daily. Now we're going to go up one flight of stairs to the weekly chart. And the weekly chart also formed a hammer candle. So you have now you got a daily uh, very bullish candle. Weekly, we were talking about the hammer and the shooting star candles out here. And you have a, a weekly hammer candle out here. Now, interestingly enough, it's really close to being a uh, two weekly hammer candles out here. So 240 is a real strong level of support out here for that 30-year Treasury yield. And it looks to me like you've tested the uh, swing point from January in 2008. Yeah, how about that? So you got another test out here, right? If I draw a line out here, it's going to be the same line of low of that hammer candle from February 8th. So at this stage here, uh, Robert, I would say, boy, you got really, really good support in the level where it is trading right now. If it... Uh, if it closes below that island bottom again on a weekly basis, which now is the hammer candle at 240, 2.409 out here, then that says you will come back, or what it says is that the 30-year treasury yield should get back to about 226 out here. You got a nice old bullish engulfing, huge bullish engulfing candle out here for the week of February 2nd. So here is your range and your levels of support inside the 30-year treasury yield out here. I hope that that helps you. So with a minute to go, what else is it that we can uh, look at out here? I don't know what else I could uh, provide. If I, I, I don't know what else to provide for you. Um, where, what are the market conditions right now? Who's in control? Let's just start there. It's always good to know who's in control, who's got the ball on the uh, playing field right now. And without a doubt, without any question whatsoever, sellers are the ones that still have the ball on the field. Uh, they're being pushed back, right? So it's kind of like yesterday was a penalty. You know, there maybe was too many men on the field, so they had a 10-yard penalty yesterday. So sellers continue to be pushed back. Uh, advanced decline oscillators below zero across the board out here. So it's still the uh, sellers that are in control. The back of the seller, they have not fumbled it. Uh, they just, were just penalized uh, yesterday out here. We know these trend lines here that have been broken. That doesn't mean that we don't see prices move higher throughout the day. That's not what I'm saying. It's just important to understand who's got the ball right now. Again, I think the best trade setup is to take your hands and sit on them. Because I think the better, the better trade opportunity comes next week. And that means you'll have to tune in next week to find out when that happens. But in the meantime, folks, happy Father's Day to all you fathers. Happy Grandfather's Day. Happy, happy weekend to everybody out there. And I'll look forward. Be safe. Use Uber if you're going to drink, and I'll see you come Monday. Have a great weekend, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.